Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Brittany Martin with the American Marketing Association, and thank you so much for joining us here today. We're so excited to have this webinar sponsored by Looker. Our presenters today are Perry and Elena. Uh, they'll be presenting on getting the most out of your marketing analytics. Just a couple quick things before we get started. Go ahead and test your chat box by letting us know your location. If you have any specific questions for our presenters, you can type those into the Q&A tab. But otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get started. This presentation will be available on demand once it concludes. And let's go ahead and get started with Perry. Hi, everyone. I'm Perry, the Partner Ecosystem Lead for Cloud for Marketing at Google Cloud. There has been a large shift across the industry to a focus on customer experience. In fact, a recent Gartner study found that 81% of marketers expect to be competing mostly or completely on the basis of customer experience in two years' time. Marketers' needs haven't changed, but the technology to put the customer in the center and focus on customer engagement is getting better. Enterprises need to increasingly focus on delivering delightful experiences if they are to continue to acquire, retain, and grow their customer base. For example, need to know who, who should you send that, what retention offers to or which future spending patterns of certain customers. This means being able to understand all of the touch points that their customers have with you today and using this intelligence to shape future experiences. Answers to these and many other questions hidden in the vast amount of data you collect. But data, and more, in cu more importantly, customer data, is spread across many places. Marketers, in particular, feel the pain of this fragmentation. Ad campaigns, CRM systems, customer service logs, website and app analytics, loyalty programs, and much more. This creates data silos making it hard for them to get a com complete So sorry for the audio issue. Hopefully everybody can hear me a bit better now. Um, so I'll just begin from the beginning of this slide. But data, and more importantly, customer data, is spread across many places. Marketers, in particular, feel the pain of this fragmentation. Ad campaigns, CRM systems, customer service logs, website and app analytics, loyalty programs, and much more. This creates data silos making it hard for them to get a complete view of their customers. Without a more complete view, it's impossible to deliver the kind of relevant experiences people expect today. And we know that most companies struggle with this problem. In fact, only 13% of organizations say they're making the most of their available customer data. We're here to help. Google Cloud supports your business across the full data journey, providing the tools you need to make the most of your marketing data. Our solution enables you at every stage, collect your data with ease, transform it with powerful cleanup tools, run analyses in seconds without server step, visualize it with beautiful dashboards, and activate insights to drive better results. This means you can manage your data lifecycle seamlessly avoiding the need to cobble together a bunch of different products. We're making big investments in this area. Soon we'll be adding more data sets, more machine learning models, and more activation connectors for you to use. This will create a virtuous cycle that benefits your business. More data and ML models, 
means better ways to activate your customer data, and better activations generate more data, which in turn improve your cycle all over again. We've developed a set of solutions based on high value use cases we have heard in conversations with enterprises over the past two to three years. Eight use cases that are packaged to be as turnkey and high impact as possible. Each of these use cases is designed to help you make more of your data in service of both short and long-term goals while minimizing initial financial investment required to implement and delivering fast time to insight. We're a leader in smart analytics. Forrester rated Google as the only leader in their insights in their <laughs> insights platforms as a high service report. We have solutions, solutions designed to meet marketers' needs, like the use cases we just walked through, and we make it easier for marketers to use these solutions themselves, whether that's by bringing their ad data into cloud with the BQ transfer service, or creating machine learning models with SQL using BigQuery ML. And while we're on the topic of ML and AI, Google is a leader in this space with technology that's truly different than any other in the market. We have over 7,500 projects powered by AI, including Google's consumer products like Search, Maps, Assistant, and more. On Google Cloud, we've embedded AI and ML in our core solutions to make AI accessible and enable transformative experiences. And in addition to these differentiators in the marketing analytics space, I also want to touch on points you may have heard in the keynote about how Google Cloud is different from other clouds. Google's infrastructure was born in the cloud and built from the ground up with security as its core. Your security is our priority. Second, our fully managed serverless offerings eliminate operational complexity and make cloud easy to adopt. Third, openness is in Google's DNA. From our commitment to open source software in areas like TensorFlow and Kubernetes to the way we build our products to give you flexibility. Our open approach means you can develop applications that can be written once and run and managed anywhere without change, on premise, on GCP, on other clouds. Finally, we help bring you the best of Google for your marketing needs. Integrations with other Google products, like Google Marketing Platform, Google Ads, Maps, Play, and YouTube, that help you get more from these products and more from Google Cloud. We've also looked to bring the best of Google, of Google to cloud for marketing. Bringing technology developed at Google, like Vision API, helps to help solve marketing use cases. Plus, Google has teams with decades of experience in working with enterprises of every size, industry, and nationality to help you solve your marketing challenges with cloud and ads technology. That means by working with Google, you can accelerate your digital transformation. Only Google Cloud has the unique combination of advantages. And that's where Looker comes in. Great. Thank you so much, Perry. Let's see. So, Perry gave a great introduction to Google Cloud, and I want to talk a little bit more about how Looker can fit into that and really help you get the smarter, a smarter way to get value from marketing data. Now, everybody knows who Google is, but maybe you don't know who Looker is, so I thought I would introduce us. First of all, we are a company with over 1,700 customers and 800 employees. We're a global company with offices in Santa Cruz, San Francisco, Tokyo, London. We really try and serve our customers across the globe. In service of the, that, we try and give our customers as much choice and openness as possible with support for over 45 SQL dialects, including BigQuery. And with that comes a huge amount of partnerships. Amazon, Google, Snowflake are all very valuable partners to Looker and all very valuable partners uh, to the space. So as many people may have heard, there is an announcement that Google has signed an agreement to actually acquire Looker. 
And that is in pursuit of that openness that Perry was talking about with the hybrid and multi-cloud options. We're very excited though. So Looker's mission is to empower people through the smarter use of data. Our vision is of a world where data isn't locked in the hands of a few technical people, but is actually able to be leveraged by everybody in a company. And so for marketers, this means easy access to all the data that we need whenever, wherever. And I believe that this easy component of it is one of the key pieces. And that's really where Looker strives to be the product that makes this the best experience for marketers. To do that, our product surfaces the best insights in your marketing data. We strive to give people the ability to answer why things happened, not just to know what things happened. And what that does is that allows you to make a better choice for whatever it is that you need to do. We make choices every day and having the data at your fingertips to make a better choice is incredibly important. And through that, then closing the loop to integrate that into workflows that ultimately make everything better with smarter use of data. Because good answers are truly vital to what we need. Um, the, to stay on top of everything, um, whether it's accounting for budget and hopefully making everything you do more efficient, easy, accurate answers are vital. We see this need break down into two main buckets that you see here. Analysis you need every day to keep the lights on, keep the wheels turning, and then the more advanced in-depth analysis help you identify areas for growth. So while they're equally important, you'll only ever get to the strategic insights if you can solve those urgent needs. And so with Looker, those urgent needs are hopefully met and scaled. Um, there are many day-to-day -day analyses that our customers use Looker for. You can see a few of the questions that people ask here. Um, and with Looker, you get these metrics and you create them once with the idea that you create a very strong foundation on top of this Google Cloud um, setup that Perry mentioned, or on top of anything. Um, you create a strong foundation that allows you to define these metrics, define these answers once, so that when you need them next month, next week, whatever it is, all you need to do is hit refresh, as opposed to having to go back and start from the beginning. With this foundation in place, and once you've dealt with all the day-to-day -day marketing questions, you can use that same data and maybe even some of the same analysis to get more strategic and to get a better view of your marketing. Um, because Looker allows you to combine a wide range of data sets and dig into highly sophisticated analysis, you can even perform complex analysis like attribution and customer acquisition costs. If we look at this first question here that we show, how, how do our best customers find us? It seems like a pretty straightforward question, except for that there's a number of words in there that are very, very open to interpretation. How does our company define best? Is it the company, customers with the highest lifetime value? Is it the customers that give us the most feedback? Maybe the ones that create the most referrals? How do we even define customers? <laughs> If we have a free product and they haven't logged in in a year, are they still a customer and they don't pay us? And what do we even think about for find us? This comes into the idea of marketing attribution. Is it where they find us the first time or where they find us the last time before they convert? Complex questions like this are really only possible to start to answer and start to think about if you have that strong foundation in place. We strongly believe in giving marketers the data that they need to do better. And luckily for us, the data actually shows that we're doing a good job. So 95% of organizations agree that Looker gives marketers access to the data that they need, which is huge for us and something we're incredibly proud of. But not only that, it allows them to find more opportunities. These opportunities are things maybe that would have gone unnoticed had they not been able to see the full picture of the data. So what does this look like? I'm personally a very visual person. And so 
I'm going to walk you through what this looks like in the architectural sense. So the first piece is getting a complete picture of your data. Harry mentioned silos, and we strive to break those silos as best as possible. So combining all of your data into a single place to get a complete picture of what's going on with your business. On top of that, we put Looker, uh, which is a robust platform that creates unified metrics and ultimately a unified understanding of the data. This is incredibly important because we can go in there and we can define things like who is a customer or for marketing and potentially sales, what is an MQL? By defining these metrics in a centralized location, we're able to then push those throughout the company. So the conversation with sales that we've inevitably all had, that is, how many MQLs did you deliver to me this quarter, is no longer an argument of the quantity, but it's an argument and a, potentially a discussion on how to actually raise that number. And on top of this platform, we then deliver data experiences. So the first experience that we pride ourselves in, really our flagship product, is our business intelligence product. Dashboards are not a, a new concept at this point, but we strive to give our customers the best experience possible and the most engaging and um, powerful experience possible to give them all the flexibility that they need. Additionally, we've really tried to build insights into the platform so that people can actually go and do something with the data that they find. So, the first piece of this is allowing you to take the data out of Looker and send it into other tools. So we at Looker, for example, use our Marketo integration to build custom lists of customers and then send that to Marketo programmatically and have that built into a automated email drip campaign that can hit them with the right message at the right time. Additionally, to taking data out of Looker into other products, we also believe that you shouldn't have to even come into Looker for your insights. We've built in a huge amount of uh, functionality for scheduling and alerts, all in the pursuit of the better use of data. And so with Google, this is what that architecture ends up looking like. Um, Looker has partnered with Google to build a number of products that actually sit really well on top of that a uh, unified foundation that Perry mentioned. And so with their transfer service and their other products in place, you can get up and running with analytics for campaign manager, analytics 360, ads, YouTube, and double click for publishers right out of the box, giving you these integrated insights really available at your fingertips. And because this is Looker, we, See customers then taking this to the next level and bringing in their product usage data and their support usage data and their marketing automation tools and whatever it is that makes their business complete and gives them that full view, bringing that into the product to then interlace with these Google products. So an example of this would be Blue Apron. Blue Apron, their marketing team uses Looker to make decisions regarding the allocation of spend so that they're maximizing their customer acquisition and retention. So they used our blocks, which are those prepackaged pieces that I mentioned, for Google Ads and also for DoubleClick to provide all the analysis they got straight from Google Console plus additional value add analysis that wasn't as intuitive in those consoles themselves. So today they have complex metrics like ROI on ad spend, flexible multi-touch attribution, and they can even predict lifetime value. And having these metrics in hand allows their marketers to make better decisions as to where they allocate their funds. Inspired by our customers, we actually wanted to take this to the next level. So Looker has built a product that actually is designed solely for digital marketers to get more out of their data. I believe that our next webinar in this series actually will touch on this heavily, so I don't want to go into too much detail, but a sneak peek is that it connects all these data sources to try and give you a unified source and really a cross-channel overview of what's going on with your marketing spend. 
all in all, Looker is really able to deliver market, great marketing experiences for numerous companies. I think when it comes down to it, this quote from Twilio really, really gets at the, the crux of the problem, which is spending less time massaging data, less time thinking about Excel sheets and like how things are going to combine and chasing down a bad cell, less time doing that and more time looking into what the data is telling us. So we as marketers can make better decisions. We can be better at our job and we can contribute more. So on this slide, you'll see this logo for Hotel Tonight. Their marketers are actually, I'm inspired by what they were able to do. Um, so they have, they offer uh, hotel rooms off like at um, late last minute hotel rooms. And one of the big, channels for them is people referring other people to the app. It's like it's one of their highest converting and one of their highest value channels and also very hard to spend money on and to increase. So when they looked at the data of who was referring customers, what they found is there were a group of people who stayed at hotels frequently and referred people frequently. There were people who stayed at hotels frequently but weren't referring people a loss but understandable. But then there was also this group of people who had never stayed at a hotel, had never booked anything through Hotel Tonight, but I had a huge number of referrals, which is very weird behavior. And they were actually afraid that it might be a fraudulent activity of some sort. So their marketers jumped into the data and they dug in and they actually just sent emails to the people that, were, that had all these recommendations. Who are you? What are you doing? And what they found was that these were actually, they were taxi drivers, they were flight attendants, they were bartenders, they were all these people that get asked, where should I send tonight? Where should I stay tonight? Um, which is such, it makes so much sense when you think about it, but if you didn't see that in the numbers and you weren't able to jump in and really dig into that, it doesn't come to you. And those are those kinds of stories that really get me excited about Looker and get me excited about marketing analytics. Buffer, again, is able to really dig into their data and create these very complex um, cohort analyses. Um, it's a, the chart is interesting. It's amazing how what, what you're able to do when you have all of this data in a single place. So one of the things that I love is that they have a customer health score, and what they're able to do is they're able to look at that and then automate the emails that they're sending along with the product usage that they see to make sure that they're hitting the customers at the right time with the right message. And that's really what it comes down to. Harry mentioned this at the beginning that it's all about putting our customers first and creating that best experience possible for our customers. And so Buffer has really been able to do this. Another company that's done amazing things is Glossier. For those not familiar with Glossier, they are a beauty brand that is sold primarily online. It started off as a blog and then started selling beauty products online about five or six years ago. And last month, they actually got their latest round of funding, which turned them into a beautiful Glossier unicorn. Um, but what they were able to do with Looker is they, they looked at the return rate of these different products that they had and especially products that were being returned and exchanged for different shades of the same product. And what that told them is that they found products that were always being exchanged for potentially a lighter shade or a darker shade. And that meant that their picture on their website wasn't accurate and it wasn't giving their customers a good enough experience as to what the product was. So they were able to flag these photos, these merchandise photos, and retake them to be able to give that customer a better experience. And finally, I'll just touch on one more customer, and that's BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed is, everybody knows BuzzFeed. Um, but the question for their, their, um, their content people was, when should we post our, when should we post? What is the best time to post a listicle? What is the best time to post a quiz? And those questions are really hard to answer because it's, very, it's a very nuanced, Piece. But before, the data was all locked within the data team, and they were really cut off, and they were the gatekeepers of the data. And what Looker allowed them to do was break down that gate 
and democratize it such that the people writing the content could actually be closer to the final decisions that were being made around it and make those better decisions with all of the relevant context. So as marketers, we need to demand better analytics and we need to demand a world where we have better results. And so we're, it's where we define metrics once and we can tie all these different sources together, ultimately ending up with a single source of truth and hopefully a customer journey that really gets the full picture. Data must always be fresh in this world. If we send someone the wrong information because it's, the data is a week old, it's a terrible experience, but also access to all of your data in a single source and then in the moment that you need it. And Looker and Google Cloud really strive to do this together to deliver our customers with the best experience possible in marketing. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to questions um, that we've had coming in along the way. Okay, perfect. So let me look in the chat box and see what's come through. But thank you, uh, Perry and Elena, for that presentation. You guys did an amazing job. It looks like we had a, a message come in from Christy. She wants to know, do you have any tips on how to communicate report analysis to high-level stakeholders and board members? It's a great question and a constant struggle. I, under, I feel you. Um, what I found is that they ultimately, like to tell a story with data, you have to get into the mind of the person that you're trying to get to. So for the board and for the high level stakeholders, what is their ultimate question and how do we tell them a story with a dashboard or a report that can answer that? So backing into it that way to me is the best path forward. So finding, you know, if it's, if it's lifetime value of a customer, having that metric, not only the metric though, but all the other pieces that kind of go into it so they can think through why the metric is happening in the same you know, context in the same dashboard as they're thinking through the metric. Um, other than that, I would say that the great piece about Looker is that it's all web-based. So people can share URLs people can embed iframes into things. So keeping things live and updated such that the, the uh, stakeholders always have the freshest, best data at their fingertips. Um, and we've actually seen very cur like curious uh, C-level executives will really jump in and start to dig into the data and that's when it gets really fun. But that's a less likely scenario. But that would be my recommendation to you, Christy. All right, great. And we have another question that came in from Gary in Miami. What's the most challenging part of um, kind of filtering through your data? What do, what do you think people um, have the most challenging uh, aspects as far as like filtering through their data? Is it too much data or is it not, not having enough data? I would say that it comes down to believing, being able to trust the data. I think that people, we see people trying to strive for a world that covers everything and it covers 100% of what's going on and covering 80% of what's going on gives you more information. So what I mean by that is that having, having an understanding of two data sources together is better than just the one on their own. So it feels really overwhelming to think of unifying all of your data. And like, it, it's not, but it's not a binary state. Um, so seeing it as a journey and as an ongoing maintenance piece is really big. I think the other component of it is being able to have the flexibility to be able to define the data as it pertains to your business, not as it pertains to a, how a tool thinks your business is or how the data is structured when it comes out of products. So being able to say what our definition of lifetime value is, what our definition of an active user, MQL, whatever it may be, allows you to then create experiences that feel 
far more accurate and far more tailored to your company. Um, so internally, at least, like we have three different attribution models that all give us a different answer because a first touch attribution model gives you a very different answer as to what your best channels are than a last touch attribution model. But by being able to look at both of them, we can have a better idea and a fuller picture. And it's not about which one is right and who gets the credit. It's about what we need to do with this information. Okay, perfect. And our third question um, is, do you have any tips on how to communicate report data analysis um, to, or I'm sorry, our next question is actually, can you speak a little bit about how Looker can supplement SEO, Google Ads, keywords, campaigns? Sure. Um, I'm guessing that you're talking about the, like the analysis that we can do with that. Um, I think that, I mean, Google Ads, the data that you get in the console is great, and it's just, the problem is that it's just limited. Um, so being able to see not only what ads are doing well, but also what ads are actually creating customers. So tying that in with other data makes it more valuable to the rest of the company. Um, and if you can get down to that keyword level data, which we're actually is available in the um, application that I showed earlier and that we'll talk about next time. Um, but if you can get down to that and then tie it in with the other pieces, um, I think that's a really powerful thing. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Perry, do you, you want to add anything to that? Um, no, I think, I think you covered it. Um, you know, I, I think what's important to keep in mind is that, you know, with in, in tools like Big, like one of the unique things about BigQuery, one of the, I'd say, almost core products to the Google Cloud for Marketing story is that you really are able to blend those data sets together. So in Google Analytics and in, you know, and, and um, AdWords, you're really able to pull in a lot of that data. And so you can really build a Looker dashboard, speak to any of those data stories or any of those key stakeholders you know, you're looking to kind of present information to as well. So um, I'd really say that like that is what, um, th th that is really where the value comes in. And so no matter what kind of data you're talking about, whether it's that SEO data or Google Ads data, you, know, you can also actually bring in, you know, broader trends like weather reports and things like that. Layering any of those different types of data on top of each other can really kind of help paint a fuller picture. Okay, perfect. And then uh, we have another question that um, actually came in from someone at AMA. They want to know, how can you really trust your data? What are, what are some tips that you can use to kind of vet your data? It's the, it's the challenging question. Oh, it's the ongoing question. Um, it's hard is the, like the bottom line. I think people, People try and use, there, so there's a few different routes for this. One is that people often try and use tools to, you know, account for the fact of like the data is messy to begin with. So at some point it does come down to the fact of like, if you have crappy data, it's going to be really hard to trust it as you get it out and into more things. Um, with that said, I think that the more transparency that you can offer, the better showing people how things are being calculated and why they're getting the answer that they are and giving them both the access to like the definition, but also the avail the ability to like drill in and make sure that when it says that there are eight campaigns here, you can, you can, you know, gut check that and see this like, yes, those are the eight campaigns that I should have in this, in this list. Um, I think it has to be a company wide effort at some level. Um, getting everybody on the same page and asking everybody to, you know, really sign on to a single platform and trust that single platform allows you to, you know, start to have these larger conversations around data that require it to be trustworthy, which requires the company to invest in it being trustworthy. And hopefully you can create a virtuous cycle um, of really robust analytics that's also very trustworthy. 
um, I think people are, the, the minute that someone doesn't trust the data, you've lost in some way. And so making sure that people understand the gravity of the situation, like that, you know, a centralized data team understands how important it is for these numbers to be right is really, really important. But I will so, so just add on to that, that like that middle purple bar that I showed there, that governance layer is just, it's absolutely key. Like you have to have everything defined in one place. If it's not, then everything will go crazy. You cannot have definitions floating around in Excel spreadsheets or in, you know, BI workbooks. Like that just will not create a trusted source. Yeah, and, and to Elena's point, um, if I can add in, you know, that education piece is really so key, right? Like there are many different ways to kind of evaluate something like a lifetime value or predictive lifetime value. So, you know, kind of understanding, ma making sure your stakeholders understand, you know, the current definition and, and how that was evaluated will definitely be instrumental in making sure your data is trusted. And data cleansing efforts, are often very, very challenging and very, very time consuming, but it really is um, a very important process in the data journey to make sure, you know, duplicates have been removed and, and anything else that really needs to, um, to, to happen. It's definitely an, a, a very key part to that data journey. Um, and it's probably one of the more challenging pieces. I couldn't agree more. Okay. And it looks like we may have time for just two more questions. Um, we had a question come in. How does the data get parsed into Looker? What would Looker replace for organizations using other software? So Looker connects directly to a relational database. Um, so in this case, we've been talking about it connecting to BigQuery. But we can, as I mentioned before, that we support over 45 different uh, SQL dialects. So we have a lot of customers that are using Amazon Redshift, a lot of customers on Snowflake, you know, MySQL, Postgres, Presto, you name it. So that's the first piece of that. Um, from there, we're issuing SQL queries down to the database and getting that back up. Um, and as far as replacing other software products and operations, um, I. We have seen customers have use cases that end up displacing numerous like SaaS tools that are really just based in data. Um, you know, a specific tool that's meant for sales analytics or a specific tool that's meant for a customer success rep. All of those can be built on top of a product like this, not to mention, you know, the more global BI tools um, that have every company seems to have. Um, I think what we've seen is that there's really no end to the, to the ways that Looker can be used in a customer. We're always, always incredibly impressed with the creativity of people um, and how they're able to integrate this data into everything. Like they're, it's triggering workflows. It's triggering, you know, fraud alerts. It's doing everything. Um, one of our customers is actually Snowflake. Um, and they use it to monitor their cloud, uh, their, their spend on servers, which is obviously they're a database company and so it's huge. And that's like, that is a huge use case and it's not really something you would consider to be a BI use case, um, more so something that is purely a data, a data play that needs custom work. Perfect. And you know what, we just have one final question. Do you have any academic outreach programs where you can provide tools such as training slides, best practices, sample data to work with? We do. Um, we have, there's a lot of different resources. Um, our user guide is a great place. I believe I can find the link for you, um, but you should be able to Google search Looker user guide and that should give you everything you need. Um, we also, I mean, as far as new customers, potential customers on the line. Um, like seeing is really believing. We can't really, like it's hard to know what you're gonna find in your data because it is so unique to your company. Um, and we offer free, we offer demos, but we also offer trials if that's, you know, something that you really wanna dig in on. 
All right, perfect. Uh, and if you guys have any um, any final words for our, our audience? Just thank you so much. All right, perfect. So thank if everyone could just, just give our speakers, Atlanta and Perry, a virtual round of applause by saying thank you in the chat. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, just a reminder, this presentation will be available on demand. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today, and we hope to see you at our next webinar.